Welcome to How to Read a Protractor. A protractor is a tool that helps us measure angles. Step one for reading a protractor is to estimate, is your angle acute, right, or obtuse? We've learned that acute angles are angles that are less than 90 degrees, right angles are angles that are 90, and obtuse angles are bigger than 90 degrees. Remember that you have a tool, a very simple tool, that you can use to help you estimate. A post-it note or a note card or even the corner of your paper can help you compare an angle that you have to 90 degrees. So for this first angle, we'll put it down here, in the post-it note down in the angle, and see that it's bigger than the corner of this angle. So this would be an obtuse angle. Here we can use it and see that this is less than, an ob than a right angle, so this is an acute angle. And when we use it to measure this one, we can see that it fits exactly, so it is likely a right angle. So whenever you're going to estimate an angle, be sure you start with estimating is it acute, right, or obtuse. So if you are asked to find the exact measurement of an angle then, you will need a protractor and you will need to match the vertex, that's the point where your two rays meet, to the hole on the protractor. Now um, also you want to make sure that your, um, the numbers on your protractor are reading in the right direction. If you lay your protractor down and all your numbers are backwards, see how 90 here, you can't see it, it's backwards, then you want to make sure you flip it over so that you're reading the numbers the correct way. So we're going to model matching the vertex to the hole on the protractor. And there's a hole right here down at the bottom in the center. So you're going to place it carefully on the vertex there. Step three is to line up one ray of the angle to the straight line at the bottom. There are two straight lines here, right on either side of the um, hole, and you need to get those lines lined up with one of the rays. So I'm going to rotate my protractor until this black line matches up with the purple line. And I still want to double check that my hole is on my vertex. And I also should look out here. The line that's um, here by the hole extends all the way out here to the bottom of the numbers. So I want to double check that all, both of those black lines are touching my ray. Okay, now I've lined it up correctly. It matches here on the vertex, this black line, and that black line out here. Step four is to decide which set of numbers to read. As you can see on the protractor, as we go um, around, there's a pair of numbers at every spot. For example, here you can see 60 and 120. You have to decide which one of those you're going to use to measure the particular angle that you have. There are pairs of numbers so that you can um, use the protractor in either direction. You can measure an angle going this way, or you can measure an angle that opens up this way. Either way, you can use the, um, the same protractor to measure the angle. So one way that you can figure out which, what, which set of numbers to use is to go back and think about was this angle that you are measuring acute or obtuse. That should give you a hint as to whether to go with the bigger number or the smaller number. You can see that this angle is definitely bigger than a right angle, so it's an obtuse angle. So we're going to go with the bigger of the two numbers that are there. And my uh, ray here is laying right on top of 130, 130, so I would call this an angle that's 130 degrees. The other way that you can decide which um, number to use as you're going across is to think about which way the angle would open. If you think about um, an angle as something that can move, and this a totally closed angle would be here on the line that you have matched up on the protractor. If it was closed and then it was opening up like the hands of a clock, would open up like this. And as you go, you can be looking for the numbers that are getting bigger. Here's 10, 20, 30, get up to 90. And so those are the numbers that are getting bigger as your angle would have opened like this. So that's the, set, the number that you would read when you got here. It would be 130. So two ways that you can think about which of the two, um, which of the numbers to use is to think about, does it make more sense, acute or obtuse, or is it, um, can we look at which way the angle might have opened in order to get us to this point? All right, a couple of what-if kind of things to think about. 
what if the angle measurement is between two labeled numbers? In our last example, it fell right on um, 130, but in, these, in this case, these two are not. So we're going to see what we should do in that case. Again, I'm going to match my vertex up to the hole and make sure that the ray is lined up all the way out here. And then you can see that it is falling right here in between 110 and 70 and 120 and 60. So first of all, I'm going to think about which um, number am I going to use out of those numbers. Well, thinking about it opening up in this direction, here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, here's 90. I know that it's going to be the bigger numbers. It's also obtuse, so that makes sense. So it's growing in this direction, and I can see that it's a number between 110 and 120. It's going, getting bigger here, and it is going about one, two, three marks after the 110, so that would be 113. On this one, this is one that's opening in the opposite direction, so I'm going to instead line it up. The last two I've been lining up with this line to the left of the hole. This time I'm going to, because my angle is opening up to the right, I'm going to line my bottom line up with this one. You could rotate your paper if you wanted to line it up the other way, but um, we'll demonstrate how to use the other set of numbers on the protractor. So I'm going to line up the hole with the vertex, make sure it's lined up this way too. Think about it as an angle opening up in this direction, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It's going to be something between 40 and 50. And if I see here this is 40, then I know this halfway longer line is 45, and it looks like it's about two more lines after that, so 46, 47 degrees. The next what if to think about is what if the rays are too short? When I lay my protractor down on this one, it doesn't go, it doesn't point all the way, uh, doesn't touch one of my uh, measurements up here. And I want to be really exact, I don't want to just guess. So the solution for this is to extend the lines of your angle. The cool thing is that your protractor also has a ruler on the bottom of it. So if you will use it as a ruler to extend the lines of your angle, then you can measure it. So put it down, be very exact about how your line is being added, making sure that you're drawing straight lines, and then you can measure it just like you would any other angle. Uh, lining up the point, lining it up here, thinking about that it's opening, it's an acute angle, it's something between 60 and 70. This looks like it's just a little bit bigger than 65, so we'll call this one 66 degrees. The next what if that you might encounter is what if you are given a protractor to use that doesn't have a hole. There's no hole down here on this particular protractor. It's all one piece. In this case, you can see that the lines are intersecting right here at the bottom. Instead of the hole, that's where you place your vertex is where the lines intersect right here at a right angle, perpendicular lines. So you're going to put the um, intersection of those right there at the, at the vertex. Make sure that the zero is lined up here, and then read it just like before. It's looking like it's lining up right to the 80 right here, just 10 degrees less than the right angle, or 90 degrees. And finally, what if you have to use an online protractor? This is an example of the type of question that you might see on an online test where you have to use a protractor. Of course, you'll want to select that tool. And then, just like a regular protractor, you want to begin by getting the hole on the bottom center of the protractor lined up with the vertex. And then you have to rotate it in just the same way that you would rotate a regular protractor. In this case, there are arrows on the side that you click and hold down to cause it to rotate. So I'm going to line up this um, baseline with the ray of my angle. And once I get it exactly lined up here, and I'm going to double check that the hole is matched up to the vertex, then I'm going to read the other side. I see that this is an obtuse angle, so my measurement should be greater than 90. And uh, it falls between 140 and 150, which right in the center there would be about 145. So I will enter those numbers here.